Hey guys, I'm mean, Fish Guy here, back with a video update on what's going on in the fish room. So about a week ago, I announced I was coming back into the hobby. I wanted to do videos, wanted to start posting on YouTube and set up the fish room. Now I'm jumping feet first into this. And the biggest thing that I wanted to do is this is a large room. It's 17 by eight feet and the roof is about eight feet tall as well. So I can fit a lot of tanks down here. Now, the biggest thing I had was how do I display all these tanks? Now I've watched over 40 videos on YouTube spanning back almost seven to eight years up to present time. Now there's three major racking systems that I've been looking at to kind of see which one would be the best for this setup. So the first one would be like your industrial shelves, like the metal, the beams, the metal beam ones, and anything like that that you kind of see in a restaurant style or like an industrial setting, even at like a pet store, they have like the dog food setting on these racks. The next one would just be your regular carpentry. So using screws and wood and building up the rack like that. Then the last one would be your cinder block and your two by four. Now, all these are great. And I really wanted to kind of see, you know, if seven years ago, someone used one of these stands, how it's progressing to today. So the first one that I'll discuss is the industrial style, the restaurant style, your metal shelving units that are no tools required. You just pop them on and you're ready to go. So a couple of the negative things that popped up with those, anything with particle board or the particle wood was swelling. If it got wet, it was breaking down over time. If it got wet, if it got moisture, it would kind of crumble and fall apart, which then would weaken the integrity of the stand. Now, if it didn't have the particle board or the, the wood or anything like that, the next thing would be just like the wires. So some people were complaining about some of the joints popping or some of the wire joints popping. They're actually on the shelf, which not all of them were popping, but one or two is enough to make you concerned with the tank being coming on level or anything like that. Now, there's a lot of great reviews on them that they're heavy duty. There's no tools required. For the most part, people had good luck with them. They had good luck with them for the long run or they modded them so that way they would last longer based on if they've had issues in the past with them or not. So those range anywhere from 60 to $180 per rack. Now, setting up as many tanks as I wanna do with the 10s and 20s, I'd be, I'd be going more towards the 180. And I would need at least three if not four of them to span this wall along with the other tanks I have coming down here. So budget wise, that made it a little hard to obtain. So the next one was just regular wood and wood screws and then staining it black, painting it black, anything like that. Those are great. The one thing is if you don't have the carpentry skills, which I have a little bit, I can do some things like that and they're all pretty easy to put together. The only concern I had was some of them, if it wasn't the dad co-cut, if those screws break or even move a little bit or settle or anything like that, it causes an issue with the tank becoming unlevel, which then affects the integrity. Now that's not hugely common. It's probably pretty rare that it happens. The main concern I had was the tipping. Now with a tank tower like that, with you know, three tens or three twenties, it can become an issue where it's tipping forward or if you're reaching into it and it moves or sways and there are ways to brace that. So the ways to brace it would be putting extra footing down on the ground attached to the tank and the stand. And then it kind of almost creates like a ski so it can't tip forward as easily. The next thing to do would be putting it into the wall. But being a concrete wall, solid concrete, that might not be a the easiest of issues to deal with. The next idea I had with that one is I could attach O-rings to the top of it and actually drill it up into the floor beams with cable ties on it to hold it in place. But that becomes unsightly. It's a lot more work than what it needs to be. And with the skis on the bottom, my concern was a tripping hazard. If you have kids down here or you're just monkeying around down here, if you trip on it or fall on it, you just don't want to have a bunch of excess wood sticking out from the tanks and the stand. So I kind of shied away from that one, although it was a lot more affordable with two by fours, only being five to $6 a piece for some of your more premium ones. So overall cost wise, it was actually pretty easy and pretty affordable to do. 
The only most expensive thing would be on that would be the wood screws, which ideally if you buy a big box of them, they're really not all that expensive, maybe $20, $30. So that was probably the most expensive part of the build. So then I came to the cinder blocks and two by fours. Now I've done this method before. It works well. It doesn't really move as long as you have a level surface. And I have my basement floor. This is super level, super flat. Um, it was definitely done with someone with OCD. Uh, like I said, it's, it's crazy how flat this floor is, which would be perfect. And if I do the cinder blocks, I already have a majority of them already stacked up, ready to go. So went down to Home Depot, I bought a bunch of two by fours just in case I decided to do the carpentry one or I did the cinder block one. And like I said, at this point, already having the cinder blocks, I might as well do it. It allows me to kind of build and choose what I need to do for fish tanks. It'll allow me to rack up a lot of 10 gallon tanks, putting them side by side for some of the breeding projects I wanna get back into. Uh, so I think at this point, the biggest one I'm gonna be moving towards, it's gonna be the cinder blocks and two by fours. Not only does it give you a workout doing it, um, but like I said, it's a little bit more rustic looking, but it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to measurements or cutting or fitting things together. Uh, and I've never had it fail unless you put too much weight in the middle and then it bows. So if you have support underneath that, you can usually kind of get rid of that. So if you guys are looking at building any kind of racks or putting racks inside your fish room, these three are gonna be the most popular ones being, like I said, if you have a little bit more money to spare and a little bit more time, definitely the metal industrial ones might be your best bet. Uh, but for something a little bit more budget friendly and you can also paint the wood and you can paint the cinder block. So a lot of people have painted the cinder blocks black and they've painted the, the wood black. So it gives that nice, you know, sleek look. So I hope this helps you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please post it down below and thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button.